Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. And thank you for this third edition of Way Out Wednesday, where we talk about some spiritual topics that might be way out there for some of you. Uh, today, we're going to talk about soul groups. You know, maybe you've heard of this and maybe you haven't heard of this, or maybe you've heard of it and it's been called something else. But my understanding of this topic is that in between our lives, now that means between incarnations, you're up there, wherever that is for you, whether that's heaven or an asteroid or, you know, I don't know, wherever that is, you will meet your soul group. Now, your soul group is a group of souls that you incarnate with over and over and over again. It's sort of like your soul family. Within this soul family, you can have people that have incarnated with you before as your mother in one life and as your son in another life. Now that's a little bit of a mind bender, but remember, our souls, our energy, just, just energy, nothing else. It is true that some souls tend to like or tend to incarnate more in female energy or more in male energy, but we don't do that exclusively because our goal is to learn is to expand our knowing and our consciousness, right? So of course we would want to come into a body where we can experience what a female experiences or what a male experiences. Okay, so there is no, there's no specific type of body that you will incarnate in. There's no specific role that you will incarnate in either. So again, you may incarnate as a mother in one life and as a daughter, uh, the daughter role might be more specific than the mother. You may never become a mother. You may never have kids. You may be a daughter, but not a mother. You may never marry, right? So you may choose these roles depending on what you're trying to learn in that life. Now, our soul group is only so big. I, I don't know if I know how big, I, I don't know that everybody's soul group is the same amount of people. I don't, I don't think that we all get 20, <laughs> you know, here's your 20 people, you know, I don't think it works like that. Uh, but we do have a group of people that we can interchange with often. And we have these past lives with these people. And what's, and what's interesting is they're showing me that you may have a past life with someone that in this life is now your son, but in the past life was your mother. But I promise you, the lesson is the same. Look for the patterns. Look for the patterns in your own life. There's where your lessons are. But staying with our soul group for a moment, you get up there, you just finished your life down here and you get up there and you're high-fiving everybody and you're like, so good to see you. It's a homecoming, it's a party. Everybody is welcoming you, is thrilled to see you, is happy to see you. Now, let me also say that you could meet, this is where it gets again to be mind bending or human, human mind bending anyway. You may meet your son up there, but yet your son is still alive. And you, you know he is because you were just on earth with him. Maybe he was at your deathbed when you crossed over, 
And yet here you are, and there he is. Now, how is that even possible? How can he be in two places at once? Well, that's because our souls are multidimensional. We can be and are two places at once. Part of our soul is in our oversoul, our higher self, which stays up there throughout all of our incarnations. Part of our soul is there to meet someone that just crossed over, even though they're still living on earth. And then there's the really sticky, mind-bending concept of parallel lives and parallel universes, which states that I've got another Susan running around. And frankly, I've got more than one Susan running around at the same time right now in this dimension because time is not linear. Basically, nothing is as we think it is. But sticking with these soul groups, you arrive up there, everybody's happy to see you. You go through this period of time where it's sort of like a debriefing, uh, where you're kind of, uh, earth energy can be kind of harsh, especially compared to that energy, which is very uh, spiritual and very high vibration. So when we come from earth, sometimes we just need time to sort of get rid of the earth energy, to shed it, to shed the earth energy from our energy body. That does not mean that if you wanted to talk to someone who's just crossed over, you can talk to them. I, I talk to them. I can talk to them an hour after they crossed over. I can talk to them a day after they crossed over. There's no waiting period in my experience, but there is some time that they do need to take to kind of slough off this earth energy. And like I said, in during that time, they can still talk to us on earth. They're not sequestered. They're not stuck in some place where they're <laughs> detoxed, <laughs> de decontaminated, um, depending, depending on your life, depending on how rough your life was. You may, you may end up going over there and being in some sort of a, vibrational spiritual healing center okay but so you 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 do that and then you're back with your soul group so you're going to spend some time which is doesn't exist over there but for the sake of us the rest of us i'm going to say you're going to spend some time over there and you're going to be kind of learning understanding, having your life review, kind of seeing what worked and what didn't work. How far did I get on my soul's journey, my soul path? What could I do different? What do I want to do? How can I continue to grow my soul in the next life? And this is when we get up there and we start doing crazy things like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Put me in, coach. I'll take that on. I'm sure I can do better. And then you get down here in a human and you're like, what was I thinking? God, what was I thinking? Right? But up there, it all seems very easy. <laughs> of course, you have all the knowledge. You can see your actions. You can see others' actions. You can see, more important than your actions, what was your, what was your energy? What were you, what were you coming from? What energetic place were you coming from when you did that action? Were you coming from a place of an open heart and good when you did that? Or were you coming from a place of, of, uh, jealousy or spite? So when you're up there, you're going to be working with your team and you're going to say, okay, yeah, you know, I think I, I obviously, I didn't learn. I didn't learn these things. I didn't, maybe I didn't learn compassion or I didn't learn to stand up for myself or I didn't learn boundaries. So I want to continue my soul's journey, learning those things. So I know 
that when I go back, that I want to continue. I mean, I made some good progress. I mean, you know, we're always positive, right? I, I made some really good progress, but I think I can do better. I think I can grow my soul more in this area. So then you go to your soul group and you're looking at all these people that you've incarnated with before and you go to this particular soul and you say, you know, how about this? How about you come down with me and how about we agree to meet when I'm 40 and you're 43 and how about you're in a relationship and I'm not and how about I fall in love with you and then you fall in love with me but you're 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 conflicted about it because you're married and how about working this out with me because I want to I want to learn what it's like uh to be maybe unrequited love. Maybe I want to learn what it's like. Maybe I broke up a marriage in a previous life. Maybe I want to learn what it's like to not do that, to choose differently. Whatever the whatever the soul lesson is, maybe you and I are going to incarnate together as brother and sister and you're going and you as my brother are going to be very protective of me. And I'm going to grow up knowing what it feels like to have somebody have my back, which I didn't have in these past lifetimes. But now I'm going to put this to use. I'm going to have this brother who's going to have my back. It's really going to protect me. And guess what that's going to do? That's going to allow me to then not be in this uh, energy of fight or flight all the time. I'm going to be able to relax. I'm going to be able to really have a childhood. I'm going to be able to really grow. And because my brother gave me this, this sort of experience of how a guy could be a good guy, I'm going to look for that and my partner, I'm going to find a good husband who's going to be a lot like my brother. And then I'm going to learn the lesson that I didn't learn in the past lives of picking bad partners or having this experience over and over again of being on my own, not being supported, just never finding the support. So maybe in this time, I'm going to bring this brother in to give me the support. And then I have free will. I can still choose bad partners. I can, I've still got that energy from my past life that's bleeding over into my current life. It might feel comfortable to me to pick the bad boy. Even though I had this really strong experience and relationship with this male relationship with my brother that showed me hey, you can pick somebody who's got your back. I might decide, no, I don't want to do that. I have this itch that I can't understand that I'm drawn to this other type of relationship. And maybe your brother, because this is the role he decided to play, remember? Maybe he's the guy that comes in every time. Maybe maybe that person beats you up and your brother comes in and rescues you and gets you out of the house. Maybe that, that person leaves you, strands you, and your brother shows up and picks you up, packs you up, takes you back, gives you a place to stay. So your brother is constantly doing his role. He's like, I'm going to show you. I'm going to take care of you. That's what you wanted. This is what This is the role we decided. So that you could learn that, hey, having a big, having a, a secure partner, someone who really is there for you when the chips are down is good. It's important. I really like that. That was the lesson you were supposed to learn. 
there it is for you being repeated over and over and over again in your life. But you're not looking at it. You're looking over here at the bad guys. Maybe that didn't work out. Maybe you felt like you could go for the bad guys because your brother was always going to bail you out. Right? Best laid plans of mice and men, right? It sometimes it doesn't work out. So you can see how your, your soul group will be very active in your, in your life. Now, maybe what happens is you said, hey, let's incarnate together. You can be my mom and I'm going to be your worst nightmare. <laughs> because you want to learn the lesson to stand up for yourself and to have boundaries and that just because someone is your blood daughter, somebody is your daughter, you may have to walk away from them. That's the lesson you want to learn. Your soul needs to learn this because your soul has been a doormat for every single lifetime. And your soul is like, hey, hey, we really got to learn to stand up for to ourselves. And she has a particular soft spot for her children. We'll let them walk all over her. Does not have any boundaries or any self-respect in regards to her own kids. So we're really going to put it to her this time. We're going to, I'm going to be your worst nightmare. I'm going to be the worst kid you could possibly have, the worst kid you could ever think about. I'm going to treat you terribly to force you ostensibly to force you to say, my God, I can't, I can't with this kid, right? Like I've given her everything. I've done everything I can do. What else? I mean, you're just praying to God. You're saying, I've done everything I can do. I don't know what else to do. And you know, if you got the message that you have to walk away from your child, you probably wouldn't listen. Even if you got the guidance, even if you got a reading and somebody said, look, this, this child is an adult and she's really caused you a lot of suffering. I think your lesson here is to stand up for yourself and, and put some boundaries down and learn that lesson that you are important. You don't walk this earth just to serve someone else. You're not a slave to your children or your spouse or your job or your political party. But anyway, you're not a slave to them. You know, you may need to learn this in this life that boundaries are super important. So we have this soul group and we all work out deals with each other. Hey, in this life, I'm going to be your neighbor. I'm going to be your neighbor that happens to live next to you for 40 years. And I'm going to be a source of solace and fun and support for you. And we're going to become really good friends. And that friendship is going to last through a lot of tragedies. You know, I'm going to lose my husband. You're going to lose a child. But you know what? We're going to support each other. You can even have a neighbor be in your soul group if they have a, a very prominent part of your life. So we do this to learn lessons. We're here to learn lessons. So hopefully you've also learned something about learning lessons, about whatever it is that you fear is, is a lesson. And, and the faster you work through that, resistance, whatever that the fear is, or the resistance, or um, the, uh, the, the, the feeling of, I don't, I don't want to look, I don't want to know. Those are the places you look. <laughs> those, those are the doors you want to open. Because that's where your soul growth is, is behind the fear. It's behind the thing you don't want to look at. 
It's behind the thing that makes you angry. If you want to supercharge this life and you want to say, well, I really want to, I really want to make some progress here. Then take a look at those areas of your life that challenge you and see it from an outsider. Try to step outside of the relationship, outside of the whole thing and look at it as an observer would. You'll learn quite a bit. Now, also, pets. Pets can be in your soul group. Maybe not all the pets you've had, but for sure there's a few pets that have made a big difference in your life. Those pets are in your soul group. You will incarnate with them or they will incarnate with you multiple times. I happened to figure out, and I've never met this dog, right? My dad had a dog when he was growing up. And, and he didn't talk a lot about the dog, but he told me a few things, just maybe a few stories about the dog. And for some reason, this is a clue, you guys, for some reason, I never forgot those stories. They stuck with me. Now, I'm going to tell you, my dad told me a whole bunch of things that I forgot, like algebra and geometry. I, I forgot all about that. I mean, he told me how to cook. <laughs> forgot about that, too. Uh, didn't Did not stick. For some reason, these offhanded remarks about this dog he had growing up, boom, like like, boom, hit me, stuck with me. Didn't think about it much. Didn't think about it much throughout my life. I've always had dogs. Until now. I'm telling you, my dog, not that one, but another one, is the freaking incarnation of that dog that he had. Now that dog is operating within my soul group. My dad is in my soul group. This dog is in my soul group. He, this dog was with my dad. This dog is now with me. The dog was a male. Now it's a female. Now, I don't think that all our pets reincarnate very quickly. I don't think that because I think that the souls want to have an opportunity to teach and if you have a beloved animal, whether it's a dog, a cat, a, a horse, whatever it is, it's your beloved, that special, special one. It's not likely, to be honest with you, to come back in your lifetime. Because another soul wants to come in and give you some lessons. Expand your soul with another animal. Now, these animals can blend. And it, it'll seem like this dog is an incarnation of my other dog. This cat is an incarnation of my other cat because they have some of the same personality traits. But it's most likely blending. That animal is blending with your animal to say, hey, I'm here, I love you. Your cat all of a sudden started acting like a cat that you had in the past. It's new behavior. That's your cat in the past coming into that cat saying, hey, I'm here. I'm with you. I wanted to, I wanted you to know. Also, they're telling me. Animals teach us lessons, right? We have soul lessons with animals, believe it or not. And that animal that's crossed over can come forward, blend with your current animal, change the behavior of that animal to help you learn a lesson. So let's say you're trying to learn a lesson of boundaries and you've got this cat and this cat has always been same personality, whatever. Now all of a sudden it's like its personality's changed a little bit, kind of acting differently. As a matter of fact, it's starting to remind you of that cat you had 10 years ago. And you start thinking, what is going on? And that's when we usually think this is a reincarnation, but we forget about that you've already had this cat for three years. And it, nothing about that cat for the first three years reminded you of that other cat. Except for now, there's some behaviors. 
that are coming out to remind you of this old other cat that you had. Those behaviors are probably coming out because your beloved cat from 10 years ago is here with this cat to help you learn your soul lesson. So if your soul lesson is boundaries, well, this cat might all of a sudden start defecating outside of their litter box. All of a sudden. Or all of a sudden, they may start doing something like getting on the, the counter when you're cooking. That's a boundary. What are you doing? Why are you acting like this? You never do this. That's so weird. You pick them up and put them on the ground. Then they're back on the counter. Well, they're pushing your boundaries, aren't they? And let me tell you, when spirit wants to send you a, me a message, a lesson, they won't just send it with one of these soul group people. They'll send it with a whole bunch. So now everybody's pushing on your boundaries, even the freaking cat. Even the freaking cat is pushing my boundaries, right? It's like, what in the heck is going on? Everybody's lost their mind. Sort of, mostly. They're trying to teach you your soul lesson. Your soul lesson is you need to have boundaries. Huh? So they've been doing it gentle probably for a long time. Maybe this little person pushed on your boundaries a little bit. And then they pushed a little harder. And they pushed a little harder. Maybe that's over the course of years. But you're not getting the lesson. And your main spirit guides who are in control of your, your soul lesson, soul path, are like, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to step this up a little bit. She's not <laughs> she's not getting the lesson. So they'll bring more of your soul group in to help you learn the lesson. Just look at your life. Look at how people's behaviors have changed. Why did their behavior change? What did that do to you? What, how did that affect you? How did your pet's behavior change? How was that affecting you? It's food for thought. Whenever you think about it, write it down because I promise you, your spirit guides will send you these messages fleeting, like so fleeting, boom, it's there, it's gone. And you think, oh, I'll remember that. You're not. You're not going to remember that. Don't make any sense to your brain. Your brain does not have a file cabinet, file folder for that information. Your brain is like, that's out of left field. I'm getting rid of that. I, ain't got, I don't got time for that. So write it down. Every time you have a weird out of left field thought that doesn't seem to make sense, but somehow it feels interesting or it has energy around it or you feel like there's something you should know, write it down. Hopefully in a book <laughs> or a tablet, not on a piece of paper um, that's going to get lost. You can write it down in your phone's notes, but sometimes we upgrade our phone and the notes are gone. So... Just try to write it down somewhere where you can really find it because this is a process. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in a week or two weeks. It could happen over the course of months or a year. So if you can go back and see all these random, seemingly random pieces of information in one place, like a book, you can then link them all together to a story and you will get the guidance that they're trying to send you. So this is how some ways, some ways that soul groups, soul groups can work with you. Now I will say this, and then I will close out this video. If you've been here a long time, if you've had thousands of incarnations here on earth, well then you've probably, possibly, used every permutation of every combination that you can with your soul group. That's where we bring people from other soul groups to come into our soul group. So we can lend ourselves out to other families, other groups, and they can lend themselves out into our group. Spice things up. Perhaps teach us this lesson in a way that our soul group souls just don't have that kind of energy set up to teach us. 
Or you can sign up to have a star seed come into your family and really blow things up. Really change the energy up. If you go back to my very first Way Out Wednesday video, it's all about star seeds. So go check that out on my channel. You can go to the main channel page by clicking the logo, go to playlist. And I will have a playlist for Way Out Wednesday. So you can see all the Way Out Wednesday videos right there together. But the first video was about star seeds. So if you really want to shake things up in your human life, you can bring in a star seed, a soul that hasn't been on earth very long, doesn't know jack about what you guys are doing, doesn't understand how to be in the family, doesn't even understand, frankly, how to be human. <laughs> and that is a real disruptor. That's a real disruptor in the family. Um, and it, it allows people to learn quicker. So the star seed will often come in and be very different. So whatever the family as a unit believes and, and holds dear, the star seed is just going to think and hold dear something completely different. So these are ways all of this is meant to grow our soul, everything. Our, our life here on earth is like the Olympics of soul growth. This is one of the hardest places. This is one of the hard, it is true. I mean, I'm speaking from a human now, but they would say it's um, it's a very uh, rich learning environment is what they just said. That is, okay, now you know the difference. They are calling this a rich learning environment and I'm calling this, I can't say, I can't say what it is on YouTube, <laughs> but there would be a lot of bleeps. <laughs> That's what I would say. So as a human experiencing this, I, I beg to differ. I think it's a little harsher than a rich learning environment, but okay, whatever. Uh, so now you can understand, hopefully about your soul group and you can dig further into this. You can get an Akashic records reading done uh, where the reader will go to your Akashic records and say, aha, yes, you've incarnated with your brother before and he is here to help you learn this lesson. So Akashic records readers can sort of shine a little light on some of this for you. Uh, the same way a good psychic reading, um, a good past lives reading can, you know, these are all ways for you to go get a piece of the puzzle. And then bring it back to your life and put it in the picture. Here's my Akashic Records reading. Aha, this makes sense. I'm going to put it right there. Now I can make sense of this part of my life. Here's a past lives reading. Ah, here. Okay, right. That makes sense. Here's a psychic. Here's a mediumship. Here's an astrology. Here's a numerology. All these things will give you puzzle pieces. If. You will take the information and put it to good use. Write it down. You know, try to understand how this information that you're being given can be useful to your life you're living right now as a human. Okay? Listen, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Way Out Wednesday. <laughs> Please leave me your comments below about this particular video, but also please give me your suggestions on what you want me to cover in my future Way Out Wednesday videos. I'll be happy to take your suggestions and uh, take really good care of yourself. This process is not easy, even if they say, what did they say? It was a learning rich environment. Um, whatever they want to say, I want to tell you it's harsh, it's hard. It's difficult. So the number one tip that I have for you as someone who is a star seed, as someone who um, is a psychic and a medium and has struggled with these things, my number one tip is love yourself through it. If, if you do nothing, love yourself. When you do that, you open up all the doors to so much extra help. When we love ourselves, our vibration is higher. When our vibration is higher, 
it better matches the spiritual realm and we can get guidance. When we're down here being self-critical, having a lot of fear and anger and that kind of thing, we can get guidance, but it's not as easy. It's not as clear. So the first thing I did to get where I am now is raise my vibration. Once I raised my vibration, I could hear my freaking guides talking to me. I'm like, who is that? And then I thought I was crazy for a while. But anyway, you get past that too. There's lots of videos. There's lots of information on how to raise your vibration. I think I've done videos on how to raise your vibration. If you go again to my main page, click the logo, you'll go to my main YouTube page. You can see a bunch of playlists and you can check out some of those videos. Okay. Take really good care of yourself. Much love to you. We'll see you again right here on this channel. Take good care. Mm -hmm.